What is the nation's fastest growing sport? The answer may surprise you. It's eSports. OU eSports in an unlikely event are able to turn that game around and win it. I'm Parker Thune, and this is OUXP2. Because this is entrepreneurial energy at its core. I mean, as we know, you know, nationally and internationally, esports has, has grown. There is like really like, a lot of interest in collegiate esports. It's more powerful than ever. Mike Aguilar or Moog uh, absolutely was you know pivotal in getting esports on the map for OU. Predecessor to the current um, CIO of IT had come back from an Amazon summit and asked us, "What is Twitch?" I spent the next three to five months just reaching out to people in the space, other industry or other collegiate developers. And at the time in 2016, there were less than 25 schools with institutional support. What do we want to create? There's no cookie cutter. We can, we can do whatever we want uh, in regards to scope, try things, learn from our mistakes intentionally, and uh, move forward. So I was just walking in my dorm. I lived in Walker, and I looked at the billboard where they hang a bunch of flyers. And we put on a, a Q&A kind of mixer event that had a small League of Legends tournament. We just giving an overview of the club and what they're like intending to do. And we ask questions about what would you want this to be? What would it look like? Is this exciting to you? To a monumental and almost 100% uh, yes, like absolutely yes. Where we sat down to start strategizing about the organization, um, the organizational chart, the jobs that we needed, and the scope of what we wanted to accomplish. My biggest goal personally was just to like create a home for gamers on campus. So when I was early on in college, you know, there was nothing really like that. There was a League of Legends club. It didn't have a lot of members or a lot of like organization to it really, not to insult them or anything. It was just, it was very casual. Yes, that was such a fun tournament. So we booked 12 hours in a library study room and camped out there all day, like hold up with Clementines and Capri Sun playing our matches. TESPA sent us a lot of cool stuff in the early days and provided some events for some Blizzard titles and things. Uh, and that's kind of how we got things started. The club has some following. Now it's time to break through with a big the scope event. of this event, it was meant to be an inclusive event to just give gamers and people that played game a home, focusing on FGC titles like uh, Smash Brothers, uh, Street Fighter, Dragon Ball, um, Tekken, things, games like that was doing his little spiel on what the club was to look like in the future, he mentioned something about there being a blog and he wanted it five years in the future. But something in my head kind of clicked and I marched up to him and I said, you said five years, I'm gonna do it in six months. And from there is uh, <laughs> where Sooner Esports kind of was born. Um, to be one of the original strategic pillars that we designed when Jack and Alex and I sat down from the get-go. And at the time, uh, now alumni Bailey Brown uh, had led the charge as the director and editor-in-chief. I got um, my first team of about three writers under me. We interviewed all of the winners, a lot of the runners-up, and just some of the Oklahoma community members because Super Bit Wars is a large enough event that it draws from all over the place, Texas and, and whatnot. And we utilized that Super Bit Wars event as a means to catapult our first kind of event coverage ever on this, on this website. So you have a website and content. Now you need to attract the attention of the next generation. How do you do that? Well, obviously our back to school events were always huge because you would get, you know, 200 or 400 extra people every every time you sent out the mass mail at the beginning, you know, all the freshmen. Back to school is always one of the most, is actually probably the most critical time for development for any organization on any campus. I attended that with both of my parents while they were here helping me move in as a freshman. And just the energy that was in the IHUB and the camaraderie from people who didn't even know each other and yet we all acted as if we've been lifelong friends. I think that just drew me in and I've been so involved in the esports club ever since. Seeing how passionate everybody was about esports and about the club and wanting to progress it. And, and from that event I got to see like like what a community feels like that is focused on my passions and, and what I care about. I felt included and I, and I and I knew I wanted to be involved. I knew I wanted to to keep working with this. 
So we were invited um, to an event called OP Live that was housed in, uh, in DFW. It was sponsored by the Dallas Fuel, which is a, is a professional Overwatch League team housed under Team Envy that's based out of Dallas. And they did an invitational with 16 teams. Being in the Oklahoma Memorial Union, just seeing a couple of people play Smash, to seeing dozens upon dozens of teams um, from co colleges all around the country. This is literally having a stage where six computers are on each side for each team member, LCDs on the front, LEDs all over the place, spotlights all over the place, and a crowd. It is a very different thing. It's very similar to being in a stadium when you're, when you're a traditional ath athlete and you're hit with the crowd noise and it's it's stunning, it stuns you because you're just not like, wait, I don't, I'm not used to playing without headsets on or at least without headsets on and a lot of this ambient noise around me. We found ourselves in the grand finals. Welcome back everybody to OP Live in Dallas, Texas. We're gonna be getting into the finals in just a moment. We are going to have OU versus UNT to see who ends up taking home the crown. The event was iconic, but the most memorable thing of that moment was both sad and extremely a proud moment for me. Sad in that we lost uh, the grand finals. That was instantly felt in that second. But what happened after that was what was really kind of the teardrop moment in reality, is that the team uh, led by Cali stood up and applauded their adversary. Um, the beauty of that is the COO of Team Envy came, af came to me afterwards, who is an, uh, an Oklahoma State University alum, uh, and he is the COO of Team Envy. And he said, I have, at that time, he's like, I've never seen that. Whatever you're creating at OU, don't stop. And he handed me his business card. So our longest running charity event is our Extra Life event, which has happened every single year in November. So Extra Life raises money, money for Children's Miracle Network hospitals, and it's a global campaign that streamers, gamers, um, many people from around the world team up together, usually with 24-hour streams or some kind of in-person event to try to raise money for that cause. Extra Life 2019, uh, we actually ran a Rocket League event and I helped uh, put together uh, the live event for that. Getting to have a fun event like that, but also uh, put it for a good cause uh, for Extra Life, I was super happy with that. And that year we resulted, I believe, in a, a culmination of, I believe, hitting a little over $2,000 raised, which was amazing for us to do it. It took a lot of energy and we were all dead tired after doing 24 hours of streaming straight. Kara had been stressing because obviously it's a very large 24 hour event, really stressful. Um, we were running horribly off schedule. We were, I think, three hours late for our first event and we were supposed to be running events back to back all day long. I was helping the Smash guys, but I came back and I was, and I said, like, hey, Kara, is, like, is everything okay? Is it still a train wreck? And she goes, no, it's actually, it's fixed. I was like, oh, well, that's cool. Like, how'd you do it? And she goes, well, I didn't. I didn't, all of the ambassadors, like I told them that they could go after their, after they finished their tournaments and we just handled breakdown and they've been working on getting everything back on schedule. And I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. There was no possible way that I could have pulled us back on track or pulled us back on schedule without all of their help. And I was super excited because uh, it provided this like community that I was like, wow, I can actually find friends and get involved with events and stuff, involved with gaming. And the OU Esports Club ended up being essentially a home for me. And I was able to like, you know, meet my friends there and like develop a community at this new university that was way larger than any university or school I've ever been to. Video games is so much more than just playing games. You know, there's the whole community aspect to it. There's the multi-million dollar tournaments that go with it. There's lifestyle changes that go with it. It's just, it's so much deeper than a lot of people realize. And I think even I just would not have understood that without having uh, some of the connections that I do with the club. And what is actually happening is community making sure that they enjoy themselves, but also it is deeper than that and that they have a home to go to. I can't thank everybody in this club enough for helping me or uh, creating a community where I felt really welcomed. Combining both the extra life side with also a specific passion of mine, which is Rocket League, I think really helped motivate me and make me think, I want to keep doing this. I want to do this on an even bigger scale. 
And it wasn't just students that wanted to see the operation expand. With a bunch of, bunch of big name OU people. I mean, Dr. Dr. Surratt was there, the vice president of student engagement or student affairs. Student leaders with OU Esports that kind of talk about um, sort of the the goals, the values, and um, the vision for esports at OU, and kind of what you've all been up to. What I loved about OU is that. The foundational goals were both first focused on kind of community and community development and engagement, as opposed to the other elements, right? Competitions there, yes, but um, it wasn't as um, prioritized, right, as other elements in terms of also the skills that you develop um, participating in other parts and aspects of esports too. Fast forward to 2020, one of the things that I learned from David, from Dr. Surratt, was that timing is important and the narrative is even more important. So just saying we have gaming and esports might speak to the students very well, but it doesn't speak to faculty and administration. They don't understand that. They just think it's purely just playing a game. They don't see the academic tie-in. They don't see the curriculum and research opportunities. They don't see um, the true power of recruitment and career services in this industry. Part, part of it strategically is having um, someone who's sort of responsible for continuing to facilitate growth. So today, Student Affairs is appointing me the Director of Esports and Co-Curricular Innovation at the University of Oklahoma. So what does that mean? So that means that the University of Oklahoma is now formally acknowledging the development of esports energies at OU, whereas in the past four years, this has been um, a labor of love type of development along with some very motivated students and growing a student organization now almost close to 1,600 members in its community. So now what this phase means is that with the university now opening kind of the doors to the next chapter of elevation, we're talking about the opportunities of departmentalization, and now we can start having conversations about things like scholarships, donation, um, development for academic curriculum, venue space, um, and everything in between. Surreal. It's a very surreal experience for a club that you joined just as kind of something to do and because some of your friends to do it, to now be pulled into talks about how we're a department of the college, uh, we're a department of the university, and there will be jobs in the future in the university doing essentially what I'm doing as a student leader. We have big things planned, so I hope you're ready. Here in its fourth year of operation, the club is now part of the OU Department of Student Affairs and continues on an upward trajectory.